So last week I had the chance to attend Cisco Live, which is basically the biggest computer networking conference in the world, like the world. And it was wild. Tons of cool tech, awesome sessions. Of course, AI was plastered all over the place. But what was the best part is I got to chat with some seriously smart people doing some amazing things in the industry. One of those conversations I captured and that really stuck with me was with Tim Titus, the CTO of Path Solutions. We talked about how network monitoring has changed over the years and why having the right monitoring solution in place isn't just helpful for keeping things running smoothly. It's actually a big part of setting yourself up for long-term success in your career as a network engineer. Because when you can see the problems clearly and fix them fast, you're not just the person keeping the lights on, you're the one driving real impact. Here's that chat I recorded live from the World of Solutions floor at Cisco Live. Let's dive into it. Well, now I'm going to welcome up our CTO, Tim Titus, as well as the bearded IT dad to come do a little live podcast for us. So come on in, folks. I'm going to pass this off to you, sir. Thank you very much. Welcome, Tim. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us live from Cisco Live. This is actually pre-recorded, I just realized, but <laughs> we are filming this here in the middle of Cisco Live's World of Solution. We got Tim Titus, the CTO of Path Solutions. And Tim, why don't you take a few seconds and introduce who you are and why should we care who you are? <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to start off with, I'm feeling like I'm at a little bit of a disadvantage here. Let me even the playing field. <laughs> okay, playing field evened. That's awesome. <laughs> we we were joking earlier that you know you're one of the few that didn't have facial hair here, <laughs> especially among your ranks. Got to got to level that up. Yeah, you, you, you beard hair usually means it's like you know your technical stuff, <laughs> and white beard hair <laughs> means you're like Gandalf of IT. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So I'm the CTO and founder of Path Solutions. I've been a network engineer for over 35 years. Uh, and so I've seen and, and dealt with just about everything in the world of networking. Uh, I've dealt with uh, bus networks, uh, Ethernet, where you have terminators fall off the end, uh, ArcNet, Token Ring, Novell Netware. I had my CNE back in the day. So I figure I, my, my gray hair has been earned uh, officially. Well, speaking of that gray hair, you say, sounds like you've been in the industry for a while. And today I want to take a minute and talk about the history of network monitoring. So you've seen a thing or two, and let's, let's talk about how the industry is involved in the realms of network monitoring. So I'm going to say that really my first encounter with network monitoring was back in the days of HP OpenView. Anyone? HP OpenView? Yeah. So... Effectively, HP OpenView came around because people realized you had Sun Solaris systems, you needed to have some way of monitoring these systems. And in one sense, HP OpenView was really the first entrant into that market uh, of doing generalized monitoring. It would ping things, uh, but really that's the core of the solution. It would just ping things. Uh, what you had to do with it, though, is you spent a lot of time saying, well, let me add a module. Let me add an SNMP module. Let me add a, a, a monitor for network monitor. And so you'd add all these modules and spend a ton of time configuring it to try and get visibility into what's up and what's down. And it was great at that, but it was also very expensive, took a lot of effort to be able to support. And so eventually, its heyday ended up passing. Now, it passed to a product called What's Up Gold. And if anyone's familiar with what's, what What's Up Gold was, is it was a desktop application. Very inexpensive. A lot of folks said, hey, go get that. It'll ping your things. And you can do a little bit more than ping. You can actually add some other monitors to it and be able to collect some data. Didn't really have good historic, but it would still tell you about something that was down as long as the application was running on your desktop. Woe was you if somebody came and closed the desktop down. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I, I've been there before though, you know, and th we're still talking early days here, right? You know, so. You know, this might be before you were born. <laughs> there, there, I do believe so. I mean, we've been talking about what's up gold all week and yeah, it, 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 it was a great solution for its time, but it still was lacking in capabilities and features. Yeah. And so effectively, it had its heyday, 
and its sunset, and really what came into play right after that was solar winds. And solar winds was something that a lot of people celebrated. They said, this is fantastic. It's all web-based. Uh, how many folks use solar winds? Okay. So effectively, it's, it's web-based. You have a lot of configuration to be able to say, I want to collect that information. I want to collect other information. I want to collect Windows information. And at its beginning, it was fantastic because it was reasonably priced. A lot of people could get it. Uh, and you could cover a lot of bases with it. And you didn't have to worry about somebody closing the laptop. Over time, though, they seem to have grown to the point where it is now viewed as the expensive solution. Uh, a lot of people here... I'm noticing a common trend here. Yeah. Everything gets more expensive as time goes. Well, in one sense, they add value along the way. So they added a lot of value. The problem is, is that they ended up being bolt-on modules that didn't integrate fully with the solution. And so it's kind of like this car that's like, well, it's a car, but it's also a pickup truck, and it has this plant hanging off the outside, and it's, 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 it's just not really perfectly designed for what it really should be able to do is top to bottom network monitoring. Uh, so it's kind of turned into this you know, bunch of bolt-on modules that end up becoming very expensive. Uh, user interface is not as clean. People say, gee, in order to really understand it, you have to go to training classes. Uh, finding out how to do something. You're pressing control, alt, left, shift, you know, to try and find out where something is. And the person who really knows how to make that product sing just left your company. So you're kind of stuck saying, we don't really know what's going on, so all we use it for is pinging things. Um, and so I encountered that, worked with that for a number of years, and figured, OK, this is actually frustrating to me personally. Uh, and I got angry. What do you do when you're angry? You, you take down the network and run for the hills? <laughs> no. You go home at the end of the day, and you pull out a C compiler. <laughs> And that's what I did for a number of years is I, I started building my own solution uh, and I just got to the point where my anger and frustration said, I want to build something that is easy to use, that tells you everything about the network so that you don't have to search for the problems on the network. Uh, I was really frustrated with the fact that a lot of those other monitoring solutions out there, you have to say, go monitor this, now go monitor this, now go monitor this. And you have to program it and spend weeks, if not months, to try and see what's going on in the network. And I think like many other network engineers, I wished for a solution that said, if you could deploy and have it magically tell you everything that's broken, because it has the smarts. That's a great thing about software. You can build smarts into software to have it do almost anything, but that the software would find the problems in the network and then give you a list and say, here's everything that's broken. That way you can go through and say, I'm going to spend my day making the network a better place. Well, and I'll, I'll chime in there because at my company, I'm a director of network operations, and I adopted an infrastructure and a network monitoring system that had been in place for four years. And during that four years, it was still not fully deployed because it just took so many hours, so much time to get every little sensor manually configured, get every little thing working perfectly, and it never did. I, I would get it working for just a few days, and then all of a sudden, the database would become corrupted and I had to recompile the database or something like that. It got so frustrating. And when I first heard about path solutions, I was like, ooh, something I can just make everything work together. I can just push a button and it just works. And it was such a sigh of relief because it takes hours and hours of time to get the right kind of monitoring working, and you got to have that visibility of what's going on in your network. And then what happens is the network changes. Exactly. <laughs> and what do you do? You spend another like week reconfiguring your monitoring software just so you know what is going on. If only the networks would stay static, you could actually get things working. Sadly, that doesn't exist. No, not anymore. And networks nowadays are evolving faster than ever. We have new technology entering our networks every single day. And with the introduction of AI, it is just the demand on the network has never been more great. And because of that demand, it 
we are expected as network engineers to make sure that network has 100% uptime. No, no more triple nines or whatever. You know, you have to have 100% uptime. If it's not, then people start grading you and say, gee, you're just not up to par. And the biggest problem with keeping 100% uptime is understanding the network. I mean, sadly, I still encounter network engineers that say, I don't even know what is in my network. I'm responsible for this stuff, and I don't know what's there. And I want to dive back into, so you were just fed up with the current monitoring tools. And so you went home, you opened up a C compiler, and said, I am going to be the change. I am going to be the, the light that guides this industry. And you created path solutions. So tell me a bit more about that process. Not every day someone just goes out and says, I am tired of the norm. I'm going to change this industry. Well, I did talk to a lot of my friends who are network engineers and found that they did have like problems. And when you have friends that all have like problems and they all run the same tools that you've run, and you're like, okay, nobody's solving this problem because nobody's listening to us. Okay, I'm going to go solve that problem. And so I had to learn how to set up a website, how to be able to sell the software, uh, how to be able to build a company, be able to grow a company. Uh, in one sense, though, my pure joy is still finding a feature that we can add that solves a network engineer's problem. And so really, the path all along has been talking to other network engineers saying, oh, I have this problem, how do you solve it? You know what? We don't solve it. Give me six months and I'll get a solution for you. And so our product has really evolved to the point where it is incredibly easy to use because network engineers look at it and say, oh, this is where I would expect this tab to be. This is where I'd expect to find this data. And so by collecting and analyzing the information the way network engineers would want to see this means it's kind of a natural solution. I sadly believe our poor documentation people, nobody reads it. That, that is true. And, you know, documentation is so important. But, yeah, so do you still consider yourself a bit of a network engineer? Because that way I can say that this tool is built by a network engineer for network engineers. At my core, I've been a network engineer. I will always be a network engineer. Uh, I love talking to network engineers. I'm, I'm, I'm a geek at heart. Uh, but if somebody says, hey, I've got a problem, and we, if we don't solve that problem, we will. That's the whole trick because we have a really fast turn cycle where we can build stuff that answers root cause problems in networks. And that's really my whole mode of operation. You know, that's so cool. I've spent this entire week with you and your team, and man, do I have some stories, but that's for another podcast episode. Uh, how much is that going to cost <laughs> me to keep those quiet? But it, it is amazing just hearing you guys talk around the dinner table, you know, during this week on how well you guys work together as a team. And it, it's, it's really special that when... I have a problem with this monitoring software, which I haven't really had any yet. I had one, and Tim was just Johnny on the spot for this. But I pick up the phone, and I actually talk to a real person based here stateside. I just think that was the coolest thing ever. And then coming to get to know the faces behind the telephone, it, it's cool and amazing what you guys have developed here. Well, thank you. In one sense... We're a little bit old school by the fact that we still sell this as a perpetual license. I think we're going to be the last company out there selling perpetual licenses to people just because we're figuring, no, we don't want SaaS because really, honestly, nobody wants SaaS. And so we're like kind of sticking to where we are. We like to have ourselves be accessible. Our support, you're not going to go through a phone tree. You're going to talk to the support person who's going to help you out. It's just, this is all, as far as I'm concerned, very old school mentality. And it's like, okay, that's how you delight customers. You say old school, but you are truly innovating and bringing in cutting edge technology, I feel. You know, we were talking about the, the overtaking of AI in the industry. You walk around any of these booths here at Cisco Live and you cannot get through two seconds talking to a salesperson without the words AI coming up. And you are, why you say you're old school, you are still integrating AI into your monitoring softwares. So, kind of. I'm going to qualify that. There's a lot of companies around here that are bantering around with AI saying, hey, we do AI this and AI that. And it's like, well, that's a lot of architecture. That's a lot of great marketing speak. But under the hood, it's actually not really a lot of AI. And so, be cautious when you hear the term. 
One thing we've had for from really the start of our product is a heuristics engine. A heuristics engine is not AI, it's effectively a logic machine. What this does is it gets plain English answers to root causes of problems in the network. For example, you can deploy our software and within the first day we're going to tell you, you have a cabling fault on this port of this switch. You have a VLAN tagging fault on this port of this switch. You have a microburst link flood on the trunk port. So we will tell you all of the plain English answers of everything that is broken in your network and there's no AI. It's a heuristics engine. But we are working on some AI that is actually going to be functionally useful. And effectively, I'm going to allude a little bit to that is, as a network engineer, you ever hate it when you have a manager come up and say, oh, uh, give me a report. I want to know which interfaces in the network are hitting 90% of the utilization or plan to hit 90% utilization within the next three months out of our northeast corridor. And you're thinking, okay, that's going to take me a week to get compile the information, put it together, answer the question of the executive, and then the executive says, well, what about the Southeast Corridor? And you're back doing reporting again. Engineers don't like doing reporting like this. If you had a way of just having a UI that said, show me all the interfaces in the Northeast Corridor that are scheduled to hit over 90% utilization in the next three months, go, and it came back, at that point, what you do is you give the manager the access to that AI and say, here, answer all of your reporting questions yourself. I'm no longer involved. So I've entered, I've implemented Path Solutions into my network at my network operations center. And one thing about a good piece of hardware, or a good piece of software, a good tool is it frees me up to do what's really important, the more important things. And a lot of people, I know are scared to spend money on a new technology and stuff like that. But the thing is, us network engineers, our time is so valuable. And what Pass Solutions has done is bought me back that time. It is giving me time to focus on other projects and to implementing new things like the wonderful world of IPv6 that we all love and we all are already eager to adopt. But it, it allows me to do so much more. It lessens the workload. It, with your hear, heuristics. Are you, are you going home on time? Am I going home on time? Yeah, because I, I am actually. I'm going home on time. And like, like spending you're spending nights and weekends solving network problems or not? Sometimes, but that's not Path Solutions' problem. That's my problem. But the, the thing is, like, with that heuristics engine you were talking about, it allows me with those plain English. You know, descriptions, it allows me to pass that off to maybe an entry-level network technician or something else, someone that may not have as much experience that would normally just see an error come in from a monitoring software and like, oh, nope, we're going to kick that up the chain to me. And I'm, again, spending those nights and weekends dealing with troubleshooting. It simplifies that for me and frees me up time where they can start solving their own problems and get more confident in the network. So effectively, it makes a junior-level tech work as equivalent of a senior level tech. That's yes. our whole game. Absolutely. Tim, this has been a great episode. This has been an amazing week here at Cisco Live. It's just been so great watching your team explain and talk to other network engineers. Um, I really have enjoyed this time here. If people want to go learn more about Path Solutions and what you guys are doing, where can they find you? So go hit up our website, www.pathsolutions.com. Uh, we have videos up there that explains what we do. We have a sandbox. You can end up registering to end up seeing the whole product. You can also do a demo. So be able to contact our sales. We'll send you a POC. We'll do a full demo for your team so you understand what's, what it's all about. Uh, but really, the whole game is if we can help solve more problems on your network at a lower cost, then we win, you win, everyone's happy. That's the whole game. Thank you again for taking the time. And thank you, everyone, for showing up for this epic live at Cisco Live event. Dakota, thank you. Absolutely. Everyone, stick around because we are going to actually be giving out some swag here at Cisco Live from the Bearded IT Dads channel. So everyone, thank you for tuning in, and I hope to see you in the next video.